So uh, I'm Cass Phillips, as Summer mentioned. I'm the founder of FailCon. I have a blank one. There we go. So I'm here to talk about failure, and specifically about how failure has, been, has played a really important role in my ser search for passion. It's played a bit of an unfortunate role. It's played a really exciting role. And so I'm, I'm here to share that with you. As, as Summer mentioned, it's an inevitable part of finding your passion. Um, so just to start things off, how many people in the audience have found their passion? I can see a show of hands. Oh, that's great. Good. You guys are going to succeed. That's awesome. How many people are still searching for their passion? A fair amount of hands. I am with you. That's totally me. I'm actually on this stage still searching for my passion today, which made me really surprised when Summer approached me and said, hey, I, I want you to speak at this event on passion. My response was, of course, I don't, I don't actually have a passion yet. I don't quite know what that feels like. I'm told it's a welling up of emotion. It's something I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love it. I'm going to pursue it with all of my heart and soul. And I haven't really felt that way about anything yet. Summer pointed out that, well, I've, I've heard that you're working on this event, and you've been working on it for four and a half years. You've fought cultural rejection of it. You've fought sponsorship rejection of it. That sounds a lot like passion to me, which made me really, actually, for this talk, rethink how I defined passion and how I identified passion in myself and what I was actually looking for, which is a little bit about what my talk is today, along with failure, which is really fun. So the story starts when uh, I was much younger. We'll take the story all the way back. You're five years old, I'm five years old, and I'm learning to ride a bike. It's an experience, at least in America, that I think everybody in this room probably shares. You're five years old, you get on the bike, the training wheels are either taken off or they're like lifted a little bit, so you kind of wobble. And your dad's running next to you, maybe it's your mom, and he's running and he's running and running. He's got, he's got the back of your bike and he's got the handlebars and he's saying, you gotta pedal faster, stop looking at me, you gotta look ahead, pedal faster, pedal faster. And he's secretly letting go, but he's not telling you, he's still running next to you. And then he kind of slows down and you, you take off on your own. And as a little kid, you look behind you and you realize that moment that he's not there anymore. And you feel two emotions, I felt two emotions. There's this fear, this absolute fear that you are now on your own. And there's this elation that you are now on your own. Usually around that time, the fear takes over and you tend to fall. <laughs> I did. I fell. I actually fell pretty badly from what my weak memory was. I was trying to learn in inner city streets, really bumpy, filled with glass, really terrible. I think I caught my leg on my bike and ripped it open and got glass in my knee. And I learned a pretty important lesson. Failure hurts. Failure hurts a lot. You're actually bleeding from failure. And of course, my dad comes over and says, come on, come on, you gotta get up, let's get back on the bike, let's go, let's do it again. Um, I'm, I'm bleeding here, do we notice this? So I go back in the house, we decide we'll start it another day. I actually didn't start it another day. I learned that that fear and that hurt was a lot scarier than that momentary elation that I felt when I was actually riding on my own. It actually took five years of my trying to hide this failure. And what came from this was it actually hurt my pride. I learned that failure not only physically hurts, it hurts your pride. At 10 years old, I still wasn't riding a bike. I was so afraid of the fall. And by 10, you start to get friends, and they make fun of you for things. And I wasn't about to show my friends that I didn't know how to ride a bike. It actually got to the point, like a movie, where kids would come out of the house on their bikes and they would ride a circle around me and laugh at me because I didn't know how to ride a bike at 10 years old, which didn't help me want to get on the bike that I had fallen off of. Eventually, the story does have a happy end. The parents saw their kids doing this. And a great lesson, I suggest to anyone who does this, they sent their kids over to my house and said, you have to teach her to ride a bike and you are not allowed to leave her house until she can ride a bike. As kids, we all forgive and forget. We ended up becoming fast friends. I did learn how to ride a bike. I was about 11. I'm now actually decent at a bike. I can get on a bike, go no-handed, go around cities. It's all good. So you'd think the lesson would have been learned, though it took me a little longer. Failure sucks. It hurts a lot. But eventually, you find a joy and a passion from that failure. Wrong. As you get older, failure gets worse. Before, I would fall off the bike, and I would maybe skin a knee. That's fine, you know, what's the problem with that? 16 years old, I get my driver's license. Yes, driver's license. So I'm 17, I'm actually a pretty safe driver, don't have the music on, no friends in the car. I get to a kind of scary intersection, it's one of those ones where it's like turning into the intersection, you can't really see. I pull up, I ease out, I'm looking, 
looking, okay, okay, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take it. Go out into the intersection and smash into a car that was coming. Totaled both vehicles, which sucked when I was 17. The, the guy driving the other car, it's a couple, husband, wife, he's this big, burly guy. Opens his now shattered door, closes it, walks up to me and goes, are you okay? In the end, this couple took their car back to their shop, took it all apart, sold all the pieces and never filed insurance on it. So really a great failure, not to me. I learned that as I get older, my failures are even more dangerous. If I fail at driving a car, I could kill somebody. If I fail at my career, I could go bankrupt. I did start my own business. If I failed at that business, I could bankrupt other people. And if I fail at raising a family, I actually ruin somebody's life. So why should I take these risks? What I learned is that passion is really dangerous. Passion is really scary. We aren't passionate about the things that are easy. When I do something and it's easy and I can't fail at it, I usually blow it off within a week or two. We're passionate about the things that challenge us, that, that make us feel like we've overcome a difficulty. Yeah, but I just learned that failure really sucks and is really dangerous. And as with the biking, it's really not worth the elation you feel. And so I've picked up a lot of passions. I've picked up things like ice skating. I ice skated for about a year. Uh, I sewed for about six months, painted for about six months. I actually played the violin for 16 years and never really gave it my all because I didn't want to suck. And that's pretty much the story of everything I've done in my life. Um, so I became what George Leonard, sorry, somewhere it's my one note, George Leonard, who wrote a book called Mastery, he calls this kind of person a dabbler, and it's really connected with me. It's actually a really exciting thing to be, especially when you're a kid. I can enter beginner classes of just about anything and excel. I shoot above the beginners. I love learning about the passions of these people on stage, about the passions of all of you. I would love at the breakout sessions for all of you to come to me, those of you who found your passion, and tell me about it. I love to share that with people. I love that, that entry into a passion. But so I, so I fly through the beginner sessions, and then I get into the intermediate classes, and things get a little bit tougher. It's really dark. That's the Monty Python when they run away from the castle because the French people are throwing things at them. It's a great shot. So I get into this intermediate class, and I look around me, and people are failing all over, and they're all getting better than me anyways, and so I have a disinterest for this challenge. What's happened is that as a kid, it was great to be this jack-of-all-trades. I could show off. It's really fun. As an adult, all of my friends have a sincere passion, and they are excelling at it. And my fear of failure has held me back from that. It's, it's let me get pretty good at a lot of things, but it's not let me become an excellent at something. And it leads to being a little bit dissatisfied. So, Amadeus, so how do you get over that fear? Well, that's actually why I picked up George Leonard's book on mastery. It is a great book, I suggest you pick it up. But his lesson for the dabbler was, you learn to love the challenge. Really? I've been trying to learn to love the challenge for the last 15 years. If I could do that, it would be, you know, this would all be easy. I wouldn't be reading your book. So I decided that I needed to get even deeper. I needed to learn to, to study these things that I was so afraid of. I needed to get a blueprint, because things are a lot less scary with a blueprint. So it started with my newest pursuit for a new passion. I've recently picked up game design. I started into it about a year ago and just got a job about six months ago. Um, and so before I started, I read every book on game design I could find. I talked to everyone I knew who was a game designer. I did every, I signed up for all the blogs. I would know every single challenge that could hit me before it hit, and I would know exactly what people had done to get over it. As you can imagine, that didn't actually help, because when you're in the midst of that challenge, it's still a struggle. It did help a little. I've stuck with it so far for six months, so we'll see how that goes. But I knew that I needed to get even a step deeper since it wasn't really helping. I needed the blueprints to failure itself. So at the time, I was running my own event business. And on the side, I was talking to people who had, had failures in their businesses. They'd gone bankrupt. They'd had to fire people. They had to close their business. And I'd learn their stories. And I'd collect them. And I'd write about them. And I, was, I became enthralled with this idea of failure. If I could understand failure, I could understand my passion. Turns out, a lot of people are really interested in this topic. As I was doing my conferences, People would come to me and say, why aren't you putting these failure stories on stage? And I was like, well, no one wants to hear someone talk about failure. That's not fun. It just leaves us really disinterested. Turns out that was wrong. Um, our first event had 500 people. We continue to have 500 people for the last four years, and we're actually in about a dozen cities right now. Um, so definitely failure, I found, is an interesting topic that a lot of people don't like to talk about. Um, I actually don't remember what my next slide is. I'm not supposed to look at them. Right. So, 
This taught me that this knowledge makes things a lot less scary. This ability to just embrace my failure um, allowed me to start to overcome it. A big part of this was also the humor, that my first big risks were in an event called FailCon. There's something kind of funny about failing at that. Had I failed at FailCon, it's just a good story for the next event. Had it gone bankrupt, not another great story. So suddenly, failure becomes kind of funny, becomes something that I can overlook. Um, and so I took that practice and I started applying it to this new career that I'm pursuing, game design. I was terrified to get into game design. I'm literally closing my own business and starting something I have never done before. So I went through an exercise that was based on my idea here that make failure funny. And I got into a safe space, and I actually suggest a lot of people do this if you are ever afraid of something. And I walked through the actual question, what is the worst that can happen? Now, people usually say that to as a joke. No, super serious. So I sat and I thought, worst that could happen. I close my old business, and no one wants to hire me in game design. Not, not too scary. I can always just go back to the old business. Not bad. Okay, but we want worst that can happen. I close my own business. I get a job in game design, and I'm terrible at it. It's still not that bad. You know, just go back. No, we'll, we'll get super bad. We'll get terrible. I get a job in game design. I get really good. Everyone knows who I am. Then I make a terrible game that's offensive and loses a bunch of money, and all my friends reject me. And that's really weird. My friends wouldn't really reject me, but all my friends reject me. And the blogs are writing about how terrible I am, even though none of my friends in Minnesota actually read blogs. And I am forced to be homeless and move back to Minneapolis with my family, who I actually get along with really great. And I have a bunch of high school friends in Minneapolis. That's really not, that's not that bad. Huh, okay, you know, why not? I could, I could, this could be a disaster and it'd be okay. And so I do that exercise a lot now with myself where I actually think about what's the worst that could happen. I let that anxiety overwhelm me and I usually end up realizing how funny it actually is. Which led back to my initial thesis of um, Audrey too, also a good movie. Um, that passion doesn't always equal love. You don't necessarily need to love your passion. I can't say that I'm in love with failure. I am passionate about spreading the wealth of how it actually can help you. How looking at your failure, failure has been nipping at my heels my whole life. But I've finally taken the time to turn and look at it and start talking to it and say, hey, what's, what's the deal here, dude? You're, you keep biting me. Why don't, we, why don't we have a mutual agreement here? We'll become friends. And there's something about finding a passion that, that we, we keep thinking passion is going to be art. It's going to be music. It's going to be dance. It's going to be something beautiful. If you're still struggling to find your passion, which honestly I still think I am, but I guess failure is stuck with me for a little while. If you're still looking for that passion, look at some of those quieter things. That I couldn't get rid of failure meant that I had to face it. I had to bring it into my life. And I've made it a lot less scary in the process. I have to say I still don't love it. it still hurts to fail. I still actually have not driven a car since that accident. Way too scary. I picked up a motorcycle for some odd reason. That's a new pursuit, because <laughs> that's a lot less scary than driving, right? Um, but sometimes your failure will just grow on you, and you just have to kind of keep trying things, keep pursuing things, and really listen to that voice. Sometimes failure is literally just a color in your head that you feel like you have to put on a canvas somewhere, or it's just a word that you really like, like peony. Peony's been in my head for a while. I should try and put it on something. It's something that you, you've thought about. It's been a part of everything you've done. So part of my search into game design now has been that writing is something I've done since I was a kid. I keep turning it away. I don't want to show the world. It, it hurts too much to fail and have people reject your writing. But it keeps being in my brain. So it's something I thought, well, maybe I'll give it a little bit of freedom. I don't know if I'll be passionate about writing, but it's certainly been with me for a while. But most importantly, failure has been with me since the beginning. It's something I've dealt with in every single passion I've tried to find, and it's caused me to reject just about every single passion that's come my way. So turning and embracing it as a passion is hopefully helping me find a new passion. On that note, my talk's a little shorter. Um, I'm Cass Phillips. You can find me on the web at cassatthefailcon.com. Another little failure, I didn't actually get my URL. I wasn't savvy on this web thing. Then someone squatted it after my first conference. Oh well. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at Web Wallflower, and hopefully this talk will help all of you learn to embrace some of your fears, maybe look at failure as a friend through your search for passion, and hopefully by the end of the day, a couple of you have found a passion. Thanks. Mm -hmm.